Hello, and welcome to Old Roxbury Movie Reviews. I'm your host, Alex Zepeda, and today I will be reviewing Blade Runner 2049, starring Ryan Gosling and directed by Denis Villeneuve. There is an order to things. That's what we do here. We keep order. The world is built on a wall that separates kind. Tell either side there's no wall. You bought a war. You're a cop. I had your job once. I was good at it. I know. What do you want? I want to ask you some questions. Blade Runner 2049 takes place 30 years after the events of the first Blade Runner, directed by Ridley Scott. In this world, machines known as replicants are used as slave labor. Replicants who go rogue are hunted down and killed by special cops known as Blade Runners. In 2049, we follow Kay, a Blade Runner who finds a hidden secret that leads him to the hiding place of Deckard, the main character from the original Blade Runner. To say anything else would spoil some major plot points that I feel like you shouldn't know going into the film. To be honest, I'm not a big fan of the first Blade Runner. Although it is visually beautiful, in terms of story and characters, I find the film to be a bit lackluster. I find Deckard to be an uninteresting protagonist, and the questions that arise in the film concerning humanity fall a bit short due to how boring the characters are. I personally find the movie to just be really boring. I've tried watching the movie so many times to understand why so many people love it, but every time I watch it, I feel like falling asleep. I was still very excited for the second film because of the talented director, Denis Villeneuve. He directed Prisoners, a fantastic movie, Sicario I also enjoyed, and I would honestly rank Arrival as one of the best films to come out of the 2010s. With all three of those films, Villeneuve analyzes human morality, which makes him a perfect fit for the Blade Runner franchise. My reaction to Blade Runner 2049 is mixed. When I walked out of the film, I was a bit disappointed, but as I've had more time to contemplate the film and its themes, I've grown to like it more. The film is visually appealing, with breathtaking cinematography by Roger Deakins. Every single shot is stunning, similar to the original film. I also admire how this film does not try to set up any potential sequels or spin-offs. Unlike most modern reboots like Ghostbusters or The Mummy, this is a standalone film and the studio entirely trusted Denis Villeneuve to make a unique film. This movie didn't have to force in giant action sequences to appeal to the general audience. This is a slow-paced film more focused on building atmosphere and contemplating complex themes. I can honestly say Blade Runner 2049 is a superior film to the original in terms of story and characters. As much as people express their love for the first film and its themes, I feel like Decker was a poor protagonist to represent the, those themes. He never really found himself questioning whether the replicants he killed were human or not. Kay struggles with killing other replicants and questions his relationship with his artificial intelligence girlfriend and whether it's real or not. However, my problems arise with Deckard's inclusion in the film. Since his character was so boring in the first film, it makes it hard to get emotionally invested with scenes that revolve around him and moments from the previous film. I found Jared Leto's character to be a bit confusing. I was never sure whether he viewed replicants as human or if he wanted to dehumanize them like the rest of the world. While I do have some flaws with Blade Runner 2049, I can't deny that I like it more than the original. It's visually amazing with a fantastic protagonist in Kay, and it contemplates its themes of what makes you human way better than the first film ever did. When I walked out of the theater, I, I would have given the film a 7 out of 10, but upon more contemplation, I would give it an 8.5 out of 10. And after a second viewing, the rating might get a bit higher.